Dear friend, in this presentation by Francois, you will meet a lady who wrote more books, articles and letters than any other woman in the world. Besides this, her works have been translated more widely than any other writer. Meet a remarkable lady, but more importantly a messenger of God to modern man. In July of 1990, I had the privilege of attending a very special conference. It was the 55th Quinquennial General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church which met at Indianapolis in the USA. It was one of the greatest moments of my life when I saw an assembly of more than 50,000 delegates from more than 20 countries around the globe. They all have one purpose and that is to tell the world that Jesus is coming soon. At present, the Advent message is preached in more than 98% of the countries of the world. It is the desire of the church leaders and its members to enter the remaining territory in the foreseeable future. According to the United Nations, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the fastest growing denomination in certain parts of the world. Today, there are only two worldwide churches, the Roman Catholic Church and the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are all aware of the origin of the Catholic Church, but when did the Adventist Church begin and what is the secret of its rapid growth? In order to give you an intelligent answer, I will have to introduce you to the lady who wrote more extensively than any other woman ever. Her name, Ellen G. White. Let me give you a short biography of her life. Ellen Gold Harmon and her twin sister were born on November 26, 1827 in Maine near Portland in America. This is the house. The first few years of her life were spent in the countryside. The beauty of nature made a profound impression upon her young mind. She also spent her last 15 years in the beautiful countryside of California. You will be impressed with the way she describes God's handiwork in the waving grass and the lofty mountains. It was a very sad day when her father had to move into town in order to make a living and support his family. Here in Portland, Maine, where you see this red building, stood a little wooden building. In Ellen's time, it was used for a primary school. She writes in one of her publications called Life Sketches about a tragedy that struck when she was only nine years old. One of the pupils lost her temper and flung a stone at another girl. Unfortunately, the stone struck Ellen on the nose. She bled profusely and was unconscious for three weeks. Doctors told her parents that they had no hope of Ellen ever regaining consciousness and feared for her life. Well, she did recover, but she had such poor health that she never returned to school. It was during these lonely years that she spent much time in the great classroom of America's beautiful nature. And it was also during this time that she met the God of nature. When Ellen was 12 years of age in 1840, a very powerful prophetic preacher visited their town. William Miller told his audience that Jesus was coming soon and urged them to give their lives to him. Ellen responded and was subsequently baptized. Two weeks after her 17th birthday in December 1844, Ellen visited a friend of hers, Mrs. Haynes. Here on the second story, five ladies spent some time in earnest prayer and Bible study. It was during this time that Ellen received a vision from God. You will recall the great disappointment of October 22, 1844. Adventists all over the world expected Jesus to come at that time, but he didn't. And now the time had come for God to comfort his people through a very humble mouthpiece. In relating this experience, she says that she was lifted far above this dark world. She was looking for the Advent people but could not see them. A voice told her to look a little higher and then she saw them on their way to heaven. She was told to share this encouraging vision with the discouraged, disappointed Adventists. 
She felt incapable and was a little hesitant to do so. Nevertheless, she obeyed and shared in Portland, Maine and the surroundings what she experienced. The message brought encouragement and protected the people from fanaticism. Many years later, Ellen related how God told her to write down the vision. She humbly replied that ever since leaving school as a nine-year-old child, she had never again put her hand to a pen. The reason? Because of a childhood accident, her hand was shaking terribly. One night the angel appeared to her and told her to write out the visions he was giving her. She objected again. I cannot write. The commission was repeated. Write out the visions I have given you. Ellen took a pen and paper. In faith she began writing and at that very moment a miracle happened. Her hand ceased to tremble. Since that day Ellen kept on writing and writing and writing. Thousands of pages with inspired messages flowed from a pen and millions of people were blessed by reading it. You're looking at the oldest known Ellen White document in existence. It was written in July of 1847 and addressed to Joseph Bates. As you notice from the neat handwriting, there are no signs of a trembling hand. In this document, Ellen describes how she saw a soft heavenly light shining on the fourth commandment. Joseph Bates, who is also called the Apostle of the Sabbath, decided to have it printed. This is what that first printed vision looked like. A vision, volume one, number one. Joseph Bates distributed many copies amongst his friends and many were blessed by reading it. In August 1846, Ellen Harmon married James White. He was a young, energetic Adventist preacher, a good leader and an excellent organizer. Shortly after their marriage, they received an invitation to come and address a group of believers at a place called Rocky Hill. They arrived there on Thursday, April 20, 1848. And it was here in the home of the Belden family that the first of five Bible conferences was held. The beautiful Bible truths preached by Adventists all over the world today were discovered during these Bible conferences. James White later referred to it as the first general meeting of Sabbath-keeping Adventists. Her first book, A Sketch of the Christian Experience and the Views of Ellen G. White, was published seven years after she received her first vision. During her lifetime, Ellen White received more than 2,000 visions and wrote many books. Let me tell you about one of her most dramatic visions, the great controversy between Christ and Satan. She received this very important vision in a country school building in March of 1858. During this vision, God revealed to Ellen White some of the subtle temptations with which Satan would lure and tempt people just before the second coming of Jesus. The school hall in which her husband, James White, was conducting the funeral was so crowded that some had to stand outside, next to the open windows, in order to hear the message. When he had finished his sermon, Ellen got up to the surprise of the audience, and spoke a few words of comfort. Suddenly, she stopped talking. There was silence. All eyes were fixed on Ellen White. And then they saw her having a vision while she cried out, Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! The vision lasted for two hours. While all this was going on, James White explained to the audience that they were beholding a prophet of God in vision and she, just like the prophet Daniel of old, did not breathe. He invited people to come and see whether she was breathing. Ellen White had a soft smile on her face, her pulse was normal, her skin displayed a healthy hue and her eyes were open. James White told the audience that one of the signs of a true prophet in vision was the fact that their eyes remained open and he quoted Numbers 24 verse 4. The oracle of one who hears the words of God and sees a vision from the Almighty who falls prostrate and whose eyes are opened.
Someone in the audience held a mirror in front of her mouth, but no moisture was detected. They also held a candle in front of her mouth and nose. There was no breath to disturb the small flame. At times she was relating what she saw. If you have not read the book The Great Controversy Between Christ and Satan, please do so. It's just the book for our day. In this vision she saw the creation of our planet, Satan's rebellion in heaven, the fall of Adam and Eve and the announcement of the plan of redemption. In that two-hour vision, God showed her the life and work of patriarchs like Abram, Isaac and Jacob. I've never read biographies like these. She was also given a vision of the awe and splendor when God gave Moses, his servant, the Holy Ten Commandments. She saw how the law of God, and especially the fourth commandment, would become the great issue in the final conflict. She looked down the stream of time and saw how the second person of the Godhead, Jesus Christ, became a man in order to convince us of God's love for lost humanity. She saw the life of Jesus unfolding from birth to manhood. In the most gripping language, she portrayed what she saw in vision. In no other literature will you find such a dramatic description of the death of Christ on Calvary than in Ellen White's books. She saw in rapid succession how Jesus ascended to heaven and how the early church took the message all over the world. The scenes of the Dark Ages and the Reformation were revealed to her. She saw the signs of the Second Coming, like the dark day and the falling stars of 1833. She also saw the splendor of the second coming, the desolation during the millennium and the eternal home of the saved. The angel told her to write down in detail all that she saw in that very important vision. I've read it and it has given me a new appreciation for the word of God. One of my dreams was fulfilled when I visited this historic home in Battle Creek where she wrote out this dramatic vision of the conflict between Christ and Satan. Let's walk inside. On display are some of her early publications. She writes in one of them how the devil attacked her personally on her way home because he did not want the world to know about his plans for the future. You are looking at a very old edition of The Great Controversy between Christ and his angels and Satan and his angels. Let's ascend the stairway to the room where she wrote out this very important vision. This is where she worked for six months in preparation for the first edition. But because of the importance of this conflict, she added additional aspects throughout her lifetime as the Lord revealed it to her. Today the 1858 vision is published in altogether five volumes called the Conflict of the Ages series. I would strongly recommend you reading these volumes. When Ellen White prepared the 1884 edition of The Great Controversy, she used some waste paper in order to economize. This later edition was made available to the call porters and within three years they sold 50,000 copies. They had a profound influence on the lives of those who read them. In the historic cemetery of Oak Hill in Battle Creek, I visited some of the graves of Adventist pioneers. Let me quote to you what she wrote to Uriah Smith, one of them, while she was preparing the manuscript of the 1884 edition of The Great Controversy. A soul-stirring work. I write from 15 to 20 pages a day. It is now 11 o'clock and I have written 14 pages of the manuscript for volume 4. As I write upon my book, I feel intensely moved. I want to get it out as soon as possible, for our people need it so much. I shall complete it next month if the Lord gives me health as he has done. I have been unable to sleep nights for thinking of the important things to take place. Three hours and sometimes five is the most sleep I get. My mind is stirred so deeply I cannot rest. Write, 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 
I feel that I must and not delay. Great things are before us, and we want to call the people from their indifference to get ready for that day. Things that are eternal crowd upon my vision day and night. The things that are temporal fade from my sight. Ellen G. White in a letter to Elder Uriah Smith, February 19, 1884. In 1885, after completing the second edition, the General Conference asked her to visit Europe and to strengthen the new believers. When she visited the church where Zwingli, the great reformer, preached, she recognized it from a vision in 1858. She also visited this Waldensian monument that commemorates the 1524 decision to join the Reformation. While she stood here, she saw with her physical eyes what she saw in vision 27 years previously. During 1886-87, while staying in the headquarters of the church at Basel, Switzerland, she had additional visions concerning the Reformation. This led Ellen White to prepare another new enlarged edition of the Great Controversy. She returned to America and made her new home near the Hillsburg College in California. Here she completed the new enlarged edition of the Great Controversy in 1888. Millions of people around the world have read this great classic. It has been translated in many different languages and touched the lives of many, many people. They have also published shorter versions of the Great Controversy. Its warnings have protected the church. Its predictions and fulfillments in these last days generated confidence in its inspired nature. When people read this book, they are encouraged to investigate the testing truths of the Bible. The book Patriarchs and Prophets was published in 1890. It begins with the fall of Lucifer and ends with the kingship of David. I've never read anything like it in all my life. And then Ellen White devoted several years on writing about the life of Christ. Eventually the book, The Desire of the Ages, was published. Just look at this newborn little kangaroo. Guess where I took this picture? In Australia. It was here too that the great classic, The Desire of Ages, was born. Let's follow the arrow to the historic home of Ellen G. White in Kurangbong, Australia. I want to show you a few very important places. It was a very great experience to visit Sunnyside, the home where Ellen White wrote this great classic on the life of Christ. Let's walk a little closer. Under the pine tree that once stood here, Ellen White wrote portions of a well-known book, The Desire of the Ages. After six years, the material was ready for publication. But because of the large volume of material she produced, an additional two books were published, Christ Object Lessons and Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings. Let me quote you what she wrote to the President of the General Conference concerning her responsibility. I walk with trembling before God. I do not know how to speak or trace with pen the large subjects of the atoning sacrifice. I know not how to present the subjects in the living power in which they stand before me. I tremble for fear lest I shall belittle the great plan of salvation by cheap words. I bow my soul in awe and reverence before God and say, Who is sufficient for these things? Ellen G. White in a letter to O. A. Olson, July 15, 1892. Only by reading this great classic can one appreciate the value of this document. Of the more than 20,000 biographies on the life of Christ, this one stands out as the greatest. Ellen White returns to California in 1900 and makes St. Helena her home, and she calls her home Elm's Haven. Her last 15 fruitful years were spent in this home. I experienced many wonderful emotions while visiting here. 
You're looking at the upstairs room where she wrote some of her very last books. You have a magnificent view of the beautiful surroundings when you look out of this window. She was a great lover of God's beautiful nature. One of the books she wrote here at Elmshaven is called The Acts of the Apostles. It gives you a graphic description of the early disciples and the growth of the young church, a truly inspired book. Another book that was written during the last 15 years of her life is called Prophets and Kings. Once you've read these books, you can never be the same person again. Let me tell you something about the testimonies to the church. They are a compilation of all the personal messages she wrote to certain individuals and the church at large. Our story concerning the origin of the testimonies begins at Battle Creek in 1855. In November of that year, a group of Adventist believers met in a church that used to be here on this very corner. It was later demolished. This is a picture of the little church. At the conclusion of the church service, Ellen White received a vision with some very important messages for the church. After relating the contents of the vision to the congregation, they urged her to publish it. Those early believers were convinced that the rest of the Adventist church should receive the message. And here you are looking at a copy of that very first publication called Testimonies to the Church. Let's read the first few lines from the very first page of the book. November 20th, while in prayer, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly and powerfully came upon me, and I was taken off in vision. These little booklets were published at a rate of one per year, and eventually there were 30 of them. In 1870, the testimonies made their appearance in the form of four big books, that contained a total of 700 pages each. These volumes were in circulation for the next 12 years, but the Adventist believers were so eager to read about God's messages to them that they had to reprint them all. Today there are nine volumes containing a total of 5,000 pages. Testimonies number no. 9 was completed in 1909. The four volumes of the Testimony Treasures are a synopsis of the contents of the nine books. Besides the Bible, the little book called Steps to Christ is translated in more languages than any other publication. The latest figure is 167. Thousands of people all over the world who read this little book accepted Christ as their Saviour. But besides the many books she wrote, one can also read some of the more than 4,500 articles that she wrote. In the official church paper, the Review and Herald, she published 2,000 articles and the rest were published in other publications. You are looking at one of the many thousand original letters she wrote to people all over the world. This specific one was addressed to a family in California. I feel urged by the Spirit of the Lord to write to you this morning. Your case has been opened before me. Let's read another few lines from another letter of hers. I have been shown you need home religion. Your word and your spirit is not of that character that you will let your light shine in good works. God's Messenger, Ellen White as a personal message from God to you. I invite you to read these sacred volumes and enjoy a new appreciation of the marvellous love of God. In closing, I'm reading from 2 Chronicles 20 verse 20. Have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. Thank you, Francois. I invite you to get hold of Ellen White books and enrich yourself with her inspiring messages. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the inspired messages through your servant Ellen White, always pointing us to the great light, Jesus Christ. Amen.